Today we're going to be starting off the year by speaking of Meltdown and Spectre, but first, my name is Steve Smith, this is QA Weekly, and first let's talk about Meltdown. Meltdown is a vulnerability that exists outside the operating system, meaning it doesn't matter what you're running, even if it's Apple, and it affects computers at a hardware level, mostly affecting Intel's x86, x64 microprocessors, as well as some ARM-based microprocessors, allowing processes to read information in the physical kernel and other information processes that are accessible inside of the hardware memory. However, it would require your computer to both be subjected to this bug, unpatched for this bug, and of course be infected with a rogue processor that can take advantage of the bug, which I would like to point out, there is a patch for this specific meltdown issue that has been put up by Microsoft out of band if you have an up-to-date antivirus that turns on the correct registry switch, it will have installed inside your computer and provided your computer is clean, Meltdown is not actually an issue for you. And if you are an AMD user because of the way they actually access memory, you're also not affected that much by this specific thing. Just make sure that your antivirus solution does have the registry update turned on because otherwise it would cause some sort of blue screen of death, which is why Microsoft will not patch computers unless that registry check is actually turned on. Now on to Spectre, the more scarier of the uh, two different sets of bugs. So Meltdown is one specific vulnerability. Spectre is two actual vulnerabilities. It affects Intel, AMD, ARM-based processors, basically everything in existence, whether it be your PC, laptop, tablet, mobile device, or anything else, it is a vulnerability that should scare you a little bit more than Meltdown, not terrify you, I'll explain why. And Spectre itself is harder to patch for. It can be leveraged, however, it is very difficult. And in order to be fixed, software applications have to be updated to themselves individually, and it is related to how applications can actually access memory and Spectre, the Spectre vulnerability is related to the fact that applications can reach outside of their sandbox and reach and get information in other processors that they're not supposed to be able to do. So basically this is a sandboxing defeating vulnerability that exists in the way the software handles memory. And it's not a remote code execution vulnerability. So because of the way that works, if you're running a browser like Google Chrome, go to tqaweekly.com slash se8ep20. You'll go down to where there's the instructions for site isolation and you will turn that on. That is a little bit more hardcore sandboxing and that will prevent websites from accessing other information about other websites because of how that specific bug can work because it could reach and get passwords and all that. And that should help mitigate some of the risks until you get the patch for Google Chrome at the end of the month towards the 23rd. You can also use Firefox, which is supposed to have already put out a patch that deals with that specific issue. On the internet, you might want to use ad blockers. You might want to turn off JavaScript by default at the same time. And this of course also, mean, also means avoiding malicious websites to boot. Now, there is going to be a few people asking me very important questions. And the first one is, do I need to panic? And the answer is no. Update your computer, firmware, and all software when the patches come out. And this is true of everything regardless of the platform. Can, it, <clears throat> can an attacker take control of my computer using Meltdown or Spectre? This is a data acquisition vulnerability, not remote code execution. So the answer is, in fact, no. Are Meltdown and Spectre easy to exploit? Meltdown is exceedingly easy to exploit, but as I pointed out, Windows 10 has already put out a patch this week. Apple devices have a patch that is out that they can use that they can get from the Apple Store if it hasn't already been installed into the computer, but there's an operational overhead of 5 to 30%. You will see less of an operational overhead if you're running a fourth gen Intel processor or greater when it comes to Meltdown. Spectre is exceedingly harder to exploit and even harder to patch, and it will haunt us for a longer amount of time. But of course, as it is for Meltdown, it is a 
data acquisition vulnerability. As I pointed out, you would have to have Spectre on your computer or Meltdown on your computer at the same time as a virus in order for them to be able to leverage getting the information and retransmitting the information as it is or having to or having loaded a malicious website that can do the same kind of tasks. But if you're using site isolation or you have a patched version of a browser that can handle this, that shouldn't be a particular issue. And the last question you should be worrying about is, is there a processor platform, operating system or device that is unaffected by these issues? The only one that is supposedly unaffected by these issues is Raspberry Pi. But for most normal home users, there will not be a processor or platform available for a really long time that will mitigate the risks of both Meltdown and Spectre vulnerabilities. So what you really should be worrying about is just keeping your systems up to date so that they don't end up being exceedingly vulnerable to these things. Now, it would require anyway a redesign of CPUs and operating systems to use the new CPUs in order to be free of those kinds of vulnerabilities. And as we know, in 20 years, we're gonna just find another vulnerability that's been there the entire time. In the interest of pointing out who's actually gonna be more vulnerable to these, I would like to point out that the people or the companies that are most vulnerable to this are financial institutions or institutions with cloud data, not typical home users, because they will leak a lot more information than a home user would anyway. Now, if you want more information about everything and longer videos from other people, go to tqaweekly.com slash SE8EP20. And of course, just use the sources and resources at the bottom of the page. There's a lot of information that you can read. Just want to point out though, that the one from CNN is blown completely out of proportion. Just don't panic. And there's no reason to panic anyway. So, like this episode if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, share with those that you think can benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com or go to my website, tqaweekly.com for everything else. And if you want to make the show better, go to patreon.com slash tqaweekly and become a patron today. Patrons get these episodes 24 to 48 hours in advance of everyone else. Thank you for watching and goodbye.